This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. And welcome. This is Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is May 6th, 2020, and this is show number 28. Amazing, Nick. We've been at it for a month now. I mean, we started it out. People uh, were of the common belief that we were at the end of the line. The world was ending, and who knows? They might be right at some time, but it looks like the world beat them yet again, and we're in for another for another ride yeah, it, it's been a real roller coaster to say the least, though, in 2020 overall. But, you know, when everybody is so dire, that's when you got to step into the markets. And that's what we were talking about when we really started this uh, this program. So um, really, the markets have had a tremendous bounce from the March uh, low, which happened on the 23rd. And now, you know, we're up into the resistance levels and, and markets are basically just chopping around. But this is this is healthy action. This is actually what you want to see in a market right now. Um, you want to see just sideways action after, and 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 that what that represents is its digestion of the recent gains that we had. Now this is this is a a, a year where you're going to get a lot of volatility. Still, you're going to get a lot of market choppiness and fluctuations. Um, some sectors will be hit harder than others, obviously, and we're still going through the coronavirus scare. So it, it's going to be a real roller coaster this year. But a lot of the easy money which has been made. Now you wait for the next setup, and um, then you know you, you get in it again once it gives you that opportunity. But right now we're still in the uh, transition phase for the next setup. Right, so what about the algorithms? This obviously is something that none of the programmers have encountered before, this type of market. Uh, what are the algorithms doing, the algos? Well, a lot of algos are, are programmed to really look at um, – moving averages. Some of them look at Fibonacci retrace levels. So there, you have a bunch of different programmers out there. I've created several algorithms myself. So um, just when I look at what I do, I, I like to look at strength in markets. And you know, if you take out certain levels, then the algorithms will trigger more buys. If you take out certain levels to the downside, then they trigger more sells. So it's really a mixed bag of tricks what goes on out there as far as these algorithms. But remember, the people that program algorithms are human beings. And human nature never changes, therefore the market never changes. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And uh, the algorithms reflect the flaws, the assumptions of the creator, right? Absolutely. And uh, again, you know, you can you can create the greatest program or the greatest system in the world, and everything is subject to some some sort of error at times. Um, we see a lot of algorithms right now are not even programmed to a mathematics, they're programmed to keywords and words that come out on Twitter, words that come out on uh, some other, you know, news platform. So, you know, that's why uh, when you see the, the president speak, all of a sudden the market will react and, you know, maybe flush or go higher. You know, it, it's, it's really very diverse on how these algorithms are all uh, set up. Yeah, so they react. They don't even react to, to numbers anymore or the market. They're just reacting to whatever they're programmed to react to. That's fascinating. So when we look, we got our ADP job report uh, released at 8.30 a.m. this morning, and we're down just over 20 million jobs, and we haven't gotten this week's uh, unemployment stats yet. Right. So this, this week coming up, we'll have the Bureau of Labor Statistic report, and we'll see what they have to say. But ADP usually does a pretty fair, I think, a pretty decent job. So um, you know, if you look at the uh, the report overall, it looks like the service, you know, we're a service economy and we lost about 16 million jobs there. But just think about it. If the economy opens up again, which which it is doing, I mean, let's let's face it. I mean, even states that are on lockdown, they're almost being forced to reopen because people. people are just demanding it now. Rightfully and, and so. <laughs> rightfully so. Absolutely. And, and if people start getting back to work, just think about all the service jobs that can be can be filled again. It, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, so it could bounce back much quicker than you think. And I've been telling people this, and of course, you know, we're at the, we're kind of really at the bottom psychologically. Maybe we're coming up a little bit. 
So many of you out there can't see the uh, silver lining in this cloud, but nothing stays the same. And this was a precipitated event. You could, we could debate the motivation, whether there are certain interests that wanted to crash the economy, whatever, it doesn't matter. The event was precipitated. It wasn't a spontaneous crash. And then like 08, 09, you know, banking problems, all these things added up. It was, hey, let's shut down the world economy to try to control this virus. You could argue the logic of that, but that was the thing that caused it. It wasn't a market crash. It was uh, an induced or coronavirus-induced crash, as uh, I've referred to it elsewhere. Yeah, and, and you know, again, um, the markets were scheduled to go lower in 2020 anyway. It didn't really matter if we had coronavirus or not. We were going to face probably some kind of, uh, of a correction. Um, I didn't think we'd get, you know, ever see these this kind of a fall this quickly. I have to, you know, be honest and, and admit that, that it was rather dramatic. But these were the low numbers I was looking for anyway. So, you know, when I, I talk to my, my group that I, I, I trade with, you know, I, I give them an update each and every day. And every year before the uh, – Every year before the, the new year, I should say, I, I do a, a, a live broadcast and I go over a forecast. And this is what we were forecasting. I just didn't think it would happen so quickly that we tumbled as fast as we did. But I always have news for people. The further and harder you fall, the faster it happens, the further and the faster the bounce you're going to get. And it doesn't mean that you know we're not going to go back down again or anything like that. But you always have to remember, um, it's it's like if you take a, a ball and you just let it go and it hits the floor, you'll get a bounce. But if you take a ball and you slam it against the floor, you're going to get quite a bounce. So, you know, it's the same idea. Yeah, 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 the same thing and, and with the same results. So we're kind of looking, uh, this thing could open up a lot quicker than anybody out there believes, especially there's going to be a drop-off in cases you know, it's, it's amazing how people are negative and they've been programmed by the media to expect the worst. And then when the worst doesn't come, they never look back and say, well, the media doesn't know what it's talking about. The experts don't know, et cetera. So anyway, on to uh, earnings. We got uh, Disney ugly earnings report. Yeah, yeah. Th Disney had a, a really horrible earnings report. I actually listened to a little bit of it, but when you look at the stock today, it's up three and a half dollars. So there's an old saying in the stock market. When there's bad news and the stock goes higher, that's the market's way of talking to you. So, you know, uh, earlier today, Disney was was negative. Now the stock um, is higher, traded as low today, below ninety nine dollars. It's trading at one oh four and a half as we speak. Now, I don't know if it'll settle out here at this level today. Um, there's a long day in the market, but I have to think at this stage of the game to see this kind of action, that's a very, very bullish move, um, especially after a, a horrible, horrible report. And um, when you see that happen, you, you really need to take notice. Yeah, so when a stock trades higher on bad news, it's telling you something, huh? Absolutely, always, always, always. And in fact, that's the case for everything. So, you know, a lot of times when the news comes out, it's already been factored in. And what happens is the markets, uh, we'll sell a stock down and they'll take every, they'll scare everybody out and then they start to reverse it and buy it back in. And then that's, you know, it just rips. And and the same thing to the upside. I can't tell you how often I've seen stocks gap up and just, you know, reverse and go lower because the news was already ba baked into the cake. And uh, again, that's just something, you know, you'll, you'll notice in time as a trader. All right. So talk about Southwest Airlines. So I picked up – I've owned Southwest already, and I picked up another half of it today, the second half of it today, down at this level. I've been waiting for this thing to pierce the $26 level for a while. I know the news out of uh, Warren Buffett where he completely got out of all of his airline stake. Um, he, he, he's actually created a lot of shorts in that market now. So um, just think about it. All the shorts piling into the airline stocks thinking they're never going to get a bid again. And um, I think this is ripe for a short squeeze. So, uh, again, um, down here at these levels, Southwest Airlines just tagged its 200-month moving average. I can't even tell you the last – I don't even see when this thing has ever done that. And um, this is one of my favorite pattern setups. So I, I doubled down on Southwest today. 
Yeah, and as we know from 9-11, air travel can come back a lot faster than anyone believes. Certainly domestically, maybe international will take a little while to rebound. But domestically, like I booked a trip, I'm going to Freedom Fest in Vegas in July and then off to the Sprott concert, conference. rather. And what's really funny is I had frequent flyer miles and... I didn't pay for any of the tickets and they were, the miles were all discounted on Alaska airlines from Vegas to, to Seattle. It was 7,500 miles for a free trap, a free seat. I mean, they're really giving the tickets away right now. If you just go on and, and you look at some of these, uh, some of these websites here, I mean, you know, after nine 11, we, we, we were, my wife and I were flying everywhere and you could get tickets for basically nothing. And, you know, as long as you start to put people in the seats and they start to see some capacity, you know, the fear will alleviate. And that's that's the thing about um, uh, uh, about human beings. You know, we're fearful for a time. But once you see somebody get on a plane and I have a buddy of mine who owns a construction company and he travels all over the United States and he's been on a a plane. He goes, wow, I can't believe it. I, I sit in a row by myself. Um, it's fantastic. I hope this never, I hope this economy never comes back. He's saying it, you know, uh, tongue in cheek there, but, um, you know, people will start to see other people get on planes and they'll start to do it. In fact, if you're really nervous, they get this five minute, uh, COVID-19 test out there, test everybody before they get on a plane. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll have air travel back in no time at all. Yeah. Yeah. Could not agree with you more. And they're requiring people to wear masks. Now they're actually cleaning the planes doing deep cleans, the planes were getting really grungy and filthy. So maybe maybe everything related to uh, COVID-19 is not so bad. And so, oh, General Motors has reported earnings. And what do we got there? Yeah, so G- General Motors actually carved out a gain. The stock is up $1.45 today. So, you know, just go to, goes to show you, as, as dire as everything is and looks and, you know, it sounds on television – you know, GM chart is actually looking constructive to go higher. And, you know, when I look at these charts, that's why I look at charts and I really don't listen to the news. I could care less if I have on CNBC or anything else in the background. I really have it mostly on mute all the time unless there's somebody that I I really want to hear about or hear from. Um, But just watch the charts. The charts will tell you everything you need to know. This is that kind of market where people um, are, are, you know, just so swayed by what they hear in the nightly news. And um, as much as I, I hate to say the nightly news has an effect, um, it really does. You know, it's still a lot of people still turn into those, um, you know, those those historic channels like CBS, NBC, ABC. The younger people now turn towards YouTube and, and things like that to get their news. But, um, you know, in time, um Hopefully things will get a little bit more positive. You know, you just, just don't want to hear doom and gloom all day long when you turn on the uh, the nightly news. Yeah, everybody gets tired of it. Uh, I stopped watching the news many years ago. Just, uh, it just really, there's nothing good about it, nothing to be produced. I watch a couple of shows really more for entertainment than uh, getting my knowledge because uh, it's all about manipulation. It's all about... The news is all about just pushing agendas, and it doesn't matter whose news you're watching. You're better off without that stuff. It's like uh, it's like a bad uh, tequila or uh, or bad drugs, you know. You know, you just set your body up into bad vibration when the first three stories are all depressing, you know. Yes. And and that's what happens when you watch the evening news. I gave it up in 2005, and it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, I gave it up after 9/11, and. Uh, really like there's just no point in watching the news i mean they're just it's just ugh. but anyways um we will see what uh, what happens here next but uh, i don't think anything is going to change the fact that uh, the economy is going to reopen regardless what happens with the coronavirus doesn't matter uh as i look now martin county florida originally i could find one restaurant that would take reservations now there's six or eight, and that number is going up every day. So that's a, a real positive. And uh, hey, it's uh, in Georgia. It's open season. So let's see what happens here. 
Let's see what happens. And again, as one state does it, another will do it, and another will follow. Sure, there'll be some pitfalls. There'll be some setbacks. There always are. Nothing goes up in a straight line. You always get a lot of backing and filling, and that's in life as well as in charts. Yep, and uh, that's it. Backing and filling, that's just the way it works. Life is a roller coaster. If you're... Uh, if you can't accept that, then uh, then it's going to be tough for you. There's ups, there's downs, and then there's a lot of sideways where not much appears to happen till uh, till the dip comes, and then there it is. So, anyways, that's it for today. Make sure you go check out uh, Nick's site in themoneystocks.com. All of Nick's trading record is there, along with a lot of other valuable information and ways you can join Nick's circle. And uh, Twitter feed, uh, ITMS, and at NickSantiago01. And send us an email, kl at kerrylutz.com, with your thoughts. Nick, we will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, Kerry. Have a great day. This, this is, is your, your dose, dose of daily, daily market, market wisdom, wisdom with, with master, master trader, trader Nick, Nick Santiago. Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com.